Hi everyone, and welcome to the practice number six in our course, Monitoring Data Guard Configuration. In this practice, I demonstrate how to use the monitoring tools to monitor a data guard configuration. This lecture has some script files added to its downloadable resources section. You actually don't have to download them because the code in those script files is already there in the practice document. But I have made them available in the lecture resources only as a reference. We will use Oracle SQL Developer in this practice. If you don't have it, you can download it from the link as shown in the practice document. And you can install it in your hosting machine. If you haven't worked with SQL Developer before, you can skip it and run the practice commands in SQL Plus session instead. We will work on the same appliances that we created in practice number three, configure the broker. You don't have to make a copy of them. We will make no changes on our data guard configuration. The specifications are the same as the specifications of the data guard configuration that we configured in practice number three. Nothing special should be done to prepare for this practice. As usual, you just open the appliances and start the databases. In this practice, I will simulate some workload on the primary database. I will also simulate an outage of the apply process in the standby database. And then I will study how this will affect the output of the data guard monitoring tools. To get the environment ready, you just need to open the two appliances in the folder Practice 3 Configure the Broker. Start the appliances and start their databases. As in the previous practice, I already opened the appliances, created two putty sessions to connect to them, and started their databases. I will start the DGMGRL utility now, verify the broker is enabled, and start the apply process. I start with creating a simple table and a sequence in the HR schema. We will use them in our testing code. I will create a package that has two procedures. One will insert some random testing data into the created table, and one will apply random DML operations against the table. If you wish, you can download the script files from the lecture resources, or you can just copy from the PDF file and paste into the SQL Plus session. In my demonstration, I will copy from the attached text file. I will use the insert names procedure to insert 10,000 sample data into the names table. Now I create loaddml.sql script file. This script file calls the random DML procedure to apply random DML transactions against the names table.
I will create load DML shell script file. This script accepts three arguments number of connections, number of iterations, and number of rows. I will now test the script that we created. I will create five SQL plus sessions. Each session will execute 2000 iterations and the DML transactions will select randomly from the total number of rows in the table. The ps command will display the number of SQL processes that are running. The ps command displays 1 because the SQL sessions have already finished before I ran the command. Start the SQL developer and make two connections one to the primary database and one to the standby database. You can also follow the instructions in the document to rise the font size of the editor in the SQL developer utility. I have already made two connections in the SQL developer, one to SRV1 and the other to SRV2. Let me show you the properties of their connections. As you see, I used the basic connection type and defined the required information to connect to the primary database. I will now make connections to the two databases. I will use the V$ sign data guard status view to display the data guard related messages in the alert log file. I will run the query in SQL developer window. You can see in the output all the data guard related messages in the primary database. I will run the same query in the standby database. In the next step, I will check if there is any redo log gap. This query should be run in the standby database. As everything is running normally, we don't expect to see any gap at this stage. As you see, no rows returned by the query. If you want to check the redo log gap on the primary database, then you should use a different view. You get the maximum sequence number column from the V$ archived log view and compare it to the archived sequence number column in the archived destination status view, as shown in the document. The first query returns sequence number 511. The second query is showing that archived redo log file of sequence number 510 has been shipped to the standby database. The file of sequence number 511 is the current one. Let's examine the transport and apply lag statistics in the standby database.
there is zero lag at the moment. Everything looks good. Let's stop the apply process and see how this will affect the lag figures. I will run the script that we created to apply some workload on the primary database. Let's see the gap statistics now. You can observe that an apply lag time has been reported by the query. Let's see what the broker will report about the apply lag. I will run the show database command in the dgmgrl utility. Again, some apply lag is reported. I will start up the apply process and check out the same statistics back again. As you see, the lag is gone now. Let's retrieve another statistics figure now, the active apply rate. I will run the query as shown in the document in the standby database. From the output of the query, we can see that the average apply rate is 10 kp per second. You can observe from the output that we have two sets of statistics figures. The active apply rate, the average apply rate, and the redo applied, they all appear twice. This is actually because we stopped the apply process. Every time you stop and start the apply process, a new set of statistics figures will be retrieved by the vRecovery Progress view. In the dgmgrl command prompt, let's check out the same statistics. The average apply rate is displayed in the dgmgrl, and it is 9 kilobyte per second. I don't have any clue why it is different than the figure reported by the vRecovery Progress view. If you have any idea about the reason, please let me know. Next, I will use the dgmgrl to check if any archived redo log has not been sent to the standby database. For that, we have the command show database send queue entries. If the status colon value is current, this means the current online redo log file is being read and therefore all the archived log files have been sent. In dgmgrl, I will check if there is any archived log file received by the standby database but not applied. Nothing is displayed, which means all the received redlock files have been applied. I will use now the last tool for this practice. This is the vManaged Standby. This will display the processes that are being run in the standby database as part of the data guard configuration. You need to run this in the standby database.
you can observe from the output that the MRP process is running and applying the RIDO log. You can also notice the sequence number of the RIDO that's being applied by the process and the number of blocks that have been processed since the last time the process was started. We have examined the tools that will help you to monitor the data guard configuration. Those tools will be your weapons in your fight against the data guard issues. Before we end this practice, I would recommend deleting the archived Redolog files in the primary database, just to utilize the disk space. Use the delete archive log all command to delete all the archived RIDO log files that have been shipped to the standby database. Nothing special about shutting down the system in this practice. You just follow the same procedure to shut down the databases and the systems. Thanks for staying with me in this practice and see you in the next lecture. Bye for now.